Hey, welcome to the channel, All Things Business. Al Thomas today, and I am just excited to be on the call. Well, should I say not the call, but I'm live right here with Ms. Giles Adristo, who's a, a very important lady in my life, very good soul. Not only that, she's a great teacher. And I tell you what, I've been following her for years. She's just a sweetheart, and uh, her husband is amazing. And we're going to talk about some things, so be ready, because she is a business owner. So why don't you tell me about a little bit of background about yourself and when you became an entrepreneur and a little bit about, about when you started your entrepreneurship okay. life. Um, so back in, gosh, when I was raised, my dad was a business owner. Okay. So I worked for him, gosh, I was in my early 20s, and I was his office manager for his architectural firm. Okay. And so he was really my catalyst for learning business. He was such a great teacher. And so I, you know, I knew I wasn't going to go into architecture. It wasn't, I could, I love like design and all of that, but I can't draw like he can. So, <laughs> so I, I didn't go that route, but for me it was, I, the creative side came out in hairdressing. So that's when I became an independent business owner in hairdressing and then opened my own salon. Um, and I was a single mom at the time raising my daughter. So wow, yeah. hair salon. Can yeah. you do some of mine here? I mean. <laughs> Do I need a wig to pay or well, can I get I, it braided? Should I be honest? <laughs> <laughs> I can be honest with that. You always are. So then you went from, <laughs> we're friends, we go back. Yeah. So um, so with that said, you started in, in, in the salon business. Yes. How, how many years were you doing that? I did that for 27 years. Wow. Yeah. So what got you in the salon business? What motivated you for that? I've always liked the, um, you know, the world of makeup and, and hair and all of that stuff. And so... I told my dad one day, I said, you know, I, I love working for you, but one of the things for me was I, I just, uh, my creativity comes in the, the cosmetology type of, so I'd love to go to school mm -hmm. and do that. And he's, he's like, you come work for me for, you know, work for me part time and you go to school and, and that's what I did. Wow. And so I was really passionate about hair and, and makeup and that kind of thing. Wow. Yeah. So after that, what was your venture, what you ventured after that? Um, after that, I, um, you know, I met my husband during the time I owned my own salon, mm -hmm. and we got married. And he was a general contractor, so um, Tony actually, because I knew the architectural world and the design and so forth, I was really um, focused on the interior and landscape. So mm -hmm. I did a lot of interior and landscape for my husband's construction company. He was a high-end residential home builder, and um, we built a company. Not only did I do hairdressing still, I was still do I was working in his office doing the office managing, doing all the bookkeeping that I did for my dad because he didn't want to do that. He just wanted to be out in the field. Mm -hmm. And then I did a lot of uh, interior and landscape design for him um, when we were doing uh, high-end residential spec building homes. So we, we were at real estate investors yeah. and we still are. So um, that's something that we were passionate about was building beautiful homes. We actually owned a home. Um, that we designed and built for ourselves, a couple of them, and then um, the economy crashed in the 2000. The economy crashed. Yeah, 2008. How many of you knew that? Yeah, right? we all know about that, don't <laughs> yeah, we? Yeah, yes. So um, at that time, a friend of mine came to me and she shared something that we had never even thought of it before. So it's from the network marketing uh, industry and Tony and I just said, makes too much sense. And so we stepped into that world while hoping to rebuild the construction company. And I was still doing hair and raising a daughter, right? So yep. there's yep. a daughter right back yeah. in the She's studio. She's back there, yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, it, it was a blessing for us. We yeah. were really praying for something to change in our life. And um, that was an answer to prayer. So tell me, what it, when you got started in the network marketing business that you did, how was that when you first started? How did it go? Well, I will tell you, because we didn't know that world, um, you know, we sought out mentors like yourself. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you were someone that from the very beginning, actually, um, Tony and I were able, I, I remember running into you at, you were at dinner and you were at different places and we would run into you and you would just sit down and talk with us and because we were students and we really wanted to learn the industry. And so when you're trying to learn an industry, you have to humble yourself. So my hu husband and I said, hey, hey, we know the business world, but we didn't know this world. And so we just needed to talk to the right people. Mm -hmm. And you were a huge catalyst to the, to the growth in our business and how we really um, embraced the network marketing business. And, and we didn't have that stigma. Like some people have the stigma to network marketing because they don't really understand it. Mm -hmm. And we just said, we want to understand it and not be blind to what 
we don't know. There you go, exactly. Yeah. So um, it was really a, a great thing to be able to meet people like yourself and that you're willing to take the time to teach people, which doesn't happen in traditional business. You don't yeah. really get that kind of mentorship. So Yeah, it's called being cutthroat. Uh, you're right? my competition. Yeah. <laughs> Let me yep. get you out of here. Yeah. So with the network marketing business, how, how long uh, did you start? Uh, you got started and how long was it before you started making okay money, then great money, would you say? Well, well I don't know that it's actually natural normal for everybody <laughs> True. but so I, in my, in what i would say is being coachable to anything that you do new yes. is really really important humbling to something that you don't know right yes. and being teachable mm -hmm. and so tony and i were really that we didn't yes. have a, any ounce of time to think about anything else and learning something new that we said we're just gonna learn from the people that have done it before us. Mm -hmm. And so when we did that, because we didn't have a lot of time. Right. Like, how many people say, uh, I don't have time to do one more thing? Right. Because they have kids, they, they're, they have businesses, or they're working to have a career, or they're employees, right? So they're just busy. Mm -hmm. I hate the word busy. I always say I have a full day, not a busy day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I, you know, for us, we just we just followed a system uh -huh. that was already in place, and we were coachable. And I will tell you, within our first 43 days of business, I can't, you know, I don't want to say numbers, but it's really incredible what we were able to do, and it really opened our eyes to how, you know, it really showed us like it does work. Yeah. It does work if you work the system. And you're coachable. That's right. It works every time. And and then we just continue to build, and we hit a position, some positions in the company that were really significant in a very short time. Um, that's not everybody's story, and I think timing and and all that thing, you know, with everybody is. I important. think you said something very important: being coachable. Yeah. A lot of people want to do it the Frank Sinatra way, yeah. their way. Yeah. And remember, Frank Sinatra is the only one I know that made a million dollars off that song my way <laughs> you know we come in oh, i know this I, I'm, I'm already successful i'm you know after all you know you, you know so less successful what you did and, and and your husband was you know good in contracting building multi-million dollar homes mm -hmm. I, you know you guys could have came in with that attitude but you didn't you said well look we don't know but we're willing to learn mm -hmm. and i think that's a great thing that had pulled you into, i mean had pole bolted you into success yes. because you were coachable mm -hmm. i agree you know i agree and and, and that i i teach that that's what i teach if you can just be, and I ask that question all the time, are you coachable? And do you know how many people say, yes, I'm coachable, but it's not true? <laughs> <laughs> Let me just think about that. Yeah. 30 plus yeah. years. Uh, yeah, I'm yeah. sure you know. <laughs> <laughs> My God, if I got a dollar for all those guys, I'd be worth 20 million more. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, it's so, <laughs> it's so funny. I'm coachable. Yeah. But she, another thing you guys came in here with when you got involved in network marketing, you said, look, our business is going down because it would happen in, in the economy for a lot of Correct. people. Hey, we, we've done great. We've made great money. Hey, we don't have time. So we condense our time down yes. and say, look, give us the fruit and the potatoes and give us the meat and potatoes of, yes. of how to do this. Yes. And let us go. We're already, we're already hard workers. Mm -hmm. Just give us what we need to make that back to where, what we're used to. 100%. And I think that was a big part of your success mm -hmm. is because you didn't have a lot of time and you were coachable mm -hmm. and, and was willing and acceptable, accepting the information you got from the leaders that were doing things. Correct. Yeah. Right. I also think timing in business is everything too. Okay. You know, just just understanding the business world. Yeah. Timing, right mentors like yourself, yeah. right? Coming into your life and, and knowing that. Mm -hmm. And then the coachability. I think a lot of times people they're used to that check every two weeks. Work, work, mm -hmm. check, oh. work, work, yes. check. That in network marketing, it's like work, 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 work. Oh, where's my check? Yeah. Work, you know, and we get we're so salivating for that check. To build a business, most business owners don't take a check for a while oh. while they're building an asset. Mm. And as Robert Kiyosaki says, asset feeds you, liabilities, you know, <laughs> they destroy you. Correct. So a lot of people that are used to that, they don't understand they got to put something in. I look at uh, uh, Mr. Bezos at Amazon. I mean, he was broke for the first 10 years, and now look at him. Yeah. Because he didn't take a check and the business was going down, yeah. he kept doing it, and then it took off. And you get paid. See, investors and entrepreneurs like us, we get yes. paid later. Not every two weeks, and that's I think is a big, uh, big drawback for the average person not making it big. What well, and say? I think your teachings when we would listen yeah. to you, you know, but it but it made sense as a business owner because as a hairdresser, I come out of cosmetology school. What do I have to do? I have to get clients. Mm -hmm. I gotta hustle and get mm -hmm. out there and get the clients and and do good at what I do so that people refer people to me, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. ask for the referrals. So. 
I, that was a natural thing for me, but I, I didn't know I was doing network marketing just by doing a traditional <laughs> business, right? <laughs> and then my husband, you know, as far as building his construction company, we lost everything in that downshift and everything. Yeah. But because of the asset that, that the, the network marketing company did for us, is it showed us that we could, we could turn that around. We could build that back up, yeah. right? And and so, but it still took time. Yeah, it took five, ten years to ever make a profit. Yeah. But when you're, we never built residual income. Yeah. I mean, how many people have residual income in their life where money's working for them and they don't have to work for it? Very few of us. Yeah. Very few. <laughs> I know you, you know. do. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's a lot of business owners that are on top today, and four years later, whoosh, back on the bottom. They yeah. got to go build it again. But it's the smart ones will get some residual coming in, and that way had the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think the, the, the idea of residual income, people don't understand, they have to go put the work in to get it out. Yeah. And the only place that success comes before work is in a dictionary. Yeah. <laughs> so, you True. know, because you guys had businesses, and I think what gives a business owner, uh, a, a, I guess, a, a leg up mm -hmm. is because they know if they don't work, they don't eat. Right. And they're not sitting there waiting for every two weeks. Yeah. They gotta go hunt, they gotta go make it happen, yeah. which I respect that so much. And a lot of you folks out there, you can keep your jobs, put yeah. an hour or two a day in your own network marketing business and watch what it'll do for mm -hmm. you. You know, and then when it, when your income's over, over surpass what your job is in network, then you can, you know, when I was doing real estate, I, I had 100 agents working for me. You know, I started with zero, but you know what? It's, here again, I gotta go hustle. And every month I start with a big fat zero. I had to go out there and do the same thing over and over again. After a while, they get tiresome. Mm -hmm. And after a while, you know what? You get gray hairs or no hair. <laughs> <laughs> and then when you get old, it comes out of here and comes out of you know. And it's quiet. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that was, that was Tony and I, we, our conversation, just what you just said is, you know, we've worked all these years. Yes. But every day we had to show up. I had to do another head of hair. Yeah. He had to build another home to get paid, right? But when we could see to build that asset of residual income, now we're starting to see, I don't care if it starts at $10. Right. Our first residual check was $13. Yeah. But now what is it today after, you know, 15 years? Uh-huh. It makes a huge difference of understanding. But even the $10, Ooh. how many people make $10 residual every yeah. single month, month after month, year after year, something they did, not something they're doing. Right. Not most people do that. No, they even ten bucks. Yeah, it's only ten dollars. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but you only need to work one time. Mm -hmm. And then when it becomes a thousand dollars, then it becomes ten thousand dollars. You're like, oh my god. Yeah. But then and you've that experienced long. that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> so. Oh yeah. You know, it, it's amazing how I look back, and I haven't did. I'm still getting paid on work I did twenty some years ago, mm -hmm. twenty plus years ago. Something I did one time twenty years ago. I'm still getting paid today on. But that most people they can't fathom that because they're so busy needing that check. You yeah. know. So, yeah. and, the, and what, you work for 40 years and then what? Yeah. And people are cutting their, their retirement and all of those different things that are happening out there today. And you don't even have the amount of money to retire on that oh. you can survive on. It's sad. The 401k yes. went down to a K. Yeah. You know, and they used to have the D, D, DC plan where they did divine contrib contribution. <laughs> and then with yeah. the C, well, you had to put the money in after yeah. the business. But it's so sad now. People can't retire. They can't really afford to retire right now. No. So, no. you know, where's the goal? Where's, where's the finish line? There isn't one. You know, it's sad. I was watching 60 Minutes. Go Google 60 Minutes Retirement, and you'll see this guy. Uh, it's, it's, it was out 10 years ago, 12 years ago, and people are still in their 60s, 70s, and 80s still working, which is sad. And there's most people's future, but we don't want to think about it today. But you guys made a great decision mm -hmm. because you're coachable. You built a big organization. You're doing fantastic. And things are going great and then you have a home up in what, Wyoming. Wyoming, a yes. beautiful home in Wyoming, which I never got a chance to go to. You're going to come. But I've been invited. I've been invited <laughs> yes. to Wyoming and um, they have another home in, in California on the coast and they have this beautiful, beautiful uh, pizza oven, yes. which, uh, oh my God. <laughs> anyway, um, yes. so some tragic things happen yes. and uh, in your life. You want to yeah. share a little bit about and, and the residuals kept coming, right? Yes. So While you had to take I'll, off time. When you mentioned something earlier about retirement, I was able to retire because of this company ah. in 2012 okay. from hairdressing. So after 27 years, I could walk away from hairdressing. Thank you. And that is such a blessing to be able to have just that feeling of being able to do that. Yes. Because hairdressing is hard on your body, just like construction. And my whole goal was to always retire my husband in construction. Yes. Um, but That's really taxing. Yes, yes. And so walking away from hairdressing, I see today women and men who can't retire. And their, break, their body is breaking down and so forth. So that was a, a huge gift. Now, I will tell you, as you said, I had some tragedy, um, unfortunately, 
the man, the man of my life, my love, and my best friend. Um, he passed away in February last year. Sorry. That's all right. That's all right. This is a real call for real people. So, yep. you know, it so, happens to all of us because mm -hmm. we all have to go one day and uh, we, we don't ever expect when that day is going to be. We don't even know the hour or the minute when it's yep. going to happen, but it does. I don't care even if you're prepared for it. My mom was sick and I knew she was, you know, going and I don't care even when she went, I wasn't prepared for it. No. So none of us are. No, you're never prepared for it. And unfortunately it was a tragedy, a snowmobile accident. Yeah. And um, though we had prepared, I could tell you this company truly prepared us. This industry prepared us. And not that I knew that it was ever going to happen, but it, it did. And, um, you know, one of the things that my husband taught me very from the day one was to live life. And um, in fact, we had bracelets made um, oh, yeah. that said, live in love like Tony. And um, he just was a great man who knew how to live. And regardless of him not knowing when the end of his days were, um, you know, that was something that we did. We have three grandchildren, a beautiful daughter and son-in-law. She's right over there. She's right over Here there. in the studio. Yeah, she's in the studio. And those grandkids n knew their grandparents, um, knew how to play, know how to have fun. And um, that's something that I will um, continue to take. And it's because of, of the network yeah. marketing industry. I'll, yeah. I'll tell you, I, I think business owners just work, 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 work. And we were doing that. But we were neglecting some of the most important things in life. And I, I will tell you that those these last 15 years have been filled with love and living and um, you know being a part of our kids sports and all the things that we were able to do and they knew their grandpa their po they called him poppy poppy and he will never ever be out of their their yeah. hearts and so and even before that tragedy you had some uh, uh, family members that were in the hospital and you took some time away walked away yes. but, the, mm -hmm. but those checks kept coming didn't they that you know checks kept actually coming. my husband there's one thing that happened in 2016 where my husband actually almost passed away, he had a, an intestinal burst, and um, we had a miracle seven years ago for him. Um, and I could spend every moment of every hour in that, in that hospital with him, you know, making sure that he was, had my, my love, my touch, my feel, uh, prayers. I prayed over him every night. And I, there was not one soul that could stay every day with their family members on that floor. Wow. I was the only one there. And I, I will tell you, he healed faster because of that. And that's a gift. That's a gift that network marketing gave us because we were able to, to understand time and money together. Yeah. Most people could take off a half a day or yeah. a day, maybe two days, maybe. Yeah. A couple they gotta hours. Get, a couple hours. They got to run back to yeah. work. Their, that crazy? their boss is telling them you can't go. Yeah. You can't even go. You, yeah, it's ridiculous. I have seen for, it. For, for, for permission. permission. Yeah. My loved one's dying, but I got to have permission to yes. go see him out. See, mm -hmm. and that's what people don't understand the value that network markets bring. It's priceless. Yes. It's priceless. It's very priceless, mm -hmm. you know? It's priceless. So we got and a lot the of family that comes along with it because I the prayers <laughs> and, the, and all the people that will call and support you. It's it's beyond what I could the capacity that I could even share. Yeah. And that's the greatest gift. I yeah. mean, I, the first phone calls came from Mr. Al <laughs> Thomas and, and the founders of the company and friends that are surrounding me here in the studio. Yeah. Hey, uh, yes. I'll go for it. <laughs> and it, it's it's valuable and yeah. beyond value Not only that as soon as i heard about it i booked my flight to get there uh uh to his um, yes. celebration at the winery yes i mean that that celebration was amazing there was a, when i saw that pizza truck pull up with the oven yeah. in it all the food tell us about that donut wall <laughs> well my husband was a foodie <laughs> so there's so many things with that donut was big as my head i know bunch so. of they're all 15 and 20 different type of donuts <laughs> Yeah, we did. We, I said, if we can't do it like this, so this this uh, celebration of life was uh, at a winery that Tony had actually just finished. It was his swan song, let's yeah, say. Yeah, it's beautiful uh, too. And it was a, uh, a childhood friend, and uh, the the four brothers built uh, the, up this winery with their parents, and uh, we had this incredible celebration of life. And I said, it has to be Tony style. So it had to have pizza oven. It had to have barbecue. And it had to have something sweet. And um, we went to a couple weddings that had donut walls. And we loved those donut walls. And so I said, we have to do a donut wall for Tony. So, um, and music and dancing. Because we, I, being as uh, 
spiritual as I am connected with the Lord. Um, that's why I can actually have this conversation today with you. Um, but I can tell you that if it would, I could not mourn my husband. I had to celebrate the li his new eternal life that he had, and it and that was what we did. Yeah. And it was yeah. amazing that you were there. And oh my God, yeah. it was a it was a beautiful beautiful afternoon. <laughs> The sun going down in drinking the wineries, some wine. drinking some wine. We had to have wine, wine and crown because uh, that was Tony's thing. Yeah, my, I love crown. That's mine, y'all. That's crown is mine. Yeah. Matter of fact, it was so funny. It was not so funny, but I enjoyed myself so much dancing. I have so much, and so many friends that we yeah. haven't seen in years, yeah. and hundreds of people that I'm like, gosh, it was so. He was so celebrated yeah. that I didn't even get a chance to go inside the winery to test the wine right. out. So, so the so next you went day, back? I went. Next day, I got in the car, went right back to the winery. Yeah. So, Hey, I'm here for the wine tasting, you know, yes. and I was so blown away, but I, I would never go back to Napa Valley after that because it was so price conscious. It was great. It was wonderful. Yes. But that place was amazing. amazing. That was amazing. Yeah, How it was a beautiful together. day and they, Tony showed up in big, a big way that, with everybody there. Yeah. You know, it was yeah. it was a hard time. It was yeah. hard, but it was definitely exactly what it needed to be. So tell us now that that I don't uh, know how and, I would have done it. Yeah. If I didn't have the lifestyle that I have. See, that's yeah. one thing people don't say about network marketing. Yeah. If people open their minds up a little bit more to receive the information, you could be the next superstar. Mm -hmm. But 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 with a closed mind, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. You know, the only way a parachute works is by opening it up. So open your mind up. You know, what if you only yes. made an extra ten thousand, or five thousand, or two thousand, or more than that, or even less than that? But you got to start somewhere. Because right. let me tell you something. These jobs don't care nothing about you. Every day as you look in the newspaper or hear the radio advertise or whatever. They're laying off here, they're laying off there, they're, la they're always laying off. The question is, what are you gonna do when they lay you off? Don't expect anybody to come to your rescue unless you will rescue yourself. Yep. So if you're talking to a brand new person today about the industry of network marketing, what would you say to them? Well, I would, I would go back to the coachability. I would yeah. say, humble yourself and really understand that Finding the right coaches and mentors are the key to, to really succeeding in this business, not only for the financial side of it, but to, to grow yourself personally. The wisdom and the knowledge that people have um, that you can feed from and soak up and be able to apply, because it's not just soaking it up, you now have to apply it. You gotta get to work, you gotta, you gotta put what you're learning to work, and that's the only way to succeed here. It takes work. Trust me, <laughs> it's not it's not simple, but it you know it's not easy, but it's simple. Yeah, it is simple, but yes. most people are conditioned to hard work anyway mm -hmm. yep. because they don't realize working for somebody else, they're volunteer, they're giving away the best years of their life for a small paycheck mm -hmm. when yeah. they could be building something on. And I, well, like I said, when I started, I started an hour a day, and then it went to three hours a day, and then it went full. I mean, it's just I left my real estate business yeah. because it overtook that. And the beautiful thing is now I have time and freedom and the money yeah so when you get time freedom and money together i mean that's a great combination to have well your lifestyle is what most <laughs> wa most want to have so yeah and it's and, and i'm nobody special no it, i was very coachable too well you are special well thank you you are special is there anything on your mind <laughs> that you want to share in any closing thoughts with the with the people I, out there listening who are sitting there now drooling and yeah. like oh my god i want to be like her <laughs> well I, don't be like me. You just be yourself, right? Yeah. I, I would say that anything that you choose to do, um, you you go all in. But if you're considering the network marketing industry, uh, I mean, listening to a mentor like Mr. Al Thomas is is so valuable. Like I don't even know how to put that into words. But to find yourself in a place where you could truly uh, feel like you're at home, I always tell people. You're never going to see me until the day, I mean, you're never going to not see me until the day that I die. I will always be here in this company because it's family. Mm -hmm. And and being able to, I had a great family. I grew up with a family, but some people don't. Yeah. And I can tell you that some people here have found a family that they know that they, ride or die. Yeah. Ride or die, they're yeah. going to be right by their side. There's family right here in front of me that will never, ever leave my side. And that's that's priceless yeah not only family but people that is going to support you yes a lot of times our family don't support us they try to save yeah. you from making a mistake yeah. oh my god you're gonna oh, make yeah. a mistake ah. no they tell you the hard I mean, stuff here yeah you know i mean think about it what's a couple of dollars to start a business oh you're gonna make a mistake yeah. I and mean, we do that on clothes yeah. <laughs> right <laughs> man but it don't make you no money right mm -hmm. so why not you why not mm -hmm. i mean if think not about now it. yeah when yeah exactly time is ticking mm -hmm. have you noticed that time is stand still for nobody yeah. 
The question is, what's your backup plan? Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a question before we close this out. When it happened again and they closed us down, what, what's your backup plan? Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. I, my income went this way. Most people's income went that way. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed when that happened, your income went this way, but your bills stayed the same? Mm -hmm. What's your backup plan? Hey, I want to thank you for watching. And I want to thank Ms. Jocelyn Bristol here thank today for, for coming me. on and just sharing some truisms about the power of network marketing, the power of real estate, and the power of owning businesses. Yeah. So that's what this channel is about. It's helping you have a great day. But here again, to show you some things that you can do in your life to change your life and your family tree forever. Because remember, we all got in this business or businesses to maybe retire. If you're a traditional business owner, there's no, there's no finish line. You know, if nobody buys it. I know you're waiting for the kids to take it over. They may not want it.